Watch you lot. Right now, I'm not going to do many reviews on my channel because I don't think it's good for my channel. It's not what I do. But when something handy gets sent to me or I get asked if I want to review something that could be handy in the motorhome, then I'm going to take it and show you guys. Now, this is probably one of the most dangerous bits of kit you can carry in a motorhome, but could possibly really get you out of a sticky situation. Now, I'm at my good friend Jason's house and his house is powered by coal and wood predominantly he's got two wood burners in there and he has to process a lot of wood to keep him going through the winter months now this is not our first rodeos when it comes to using a chainsaw which is what I'm going to show you as you can see this is some of Jason's wood store that lot there that lot there this lot there and there's another stone built building up the top of his property that he uses to store wood so as you can see we're quite au fait with using such tools as this chainsaw but this chainsaw is a C6 8 inch lithium batteried chainsaw now we've just been using it we've chopped up a fair bit of wood with it and it is flipping brilliant for what you need it for another good thing before I go on about the saw is a lot of people have got Makita batteries now a Makita battery is a generic battery you can use all the way through the Makita range and that fits on that and works it's the same battery so this probably comes out the same factory but it's a fraction of the price okay i'll put all the details for it in the information below and provide you a link to where you can get it from but myself and jason we've both got chainsaws two chainsaws and all the ppe you need with a proper chainsaw as i say they can end your life you only need to slip once i know people trained professionals tree surgeons that have had accidents with these things and they do not take any prisoners i can't emphasize just how dangerous these are but for a motorhome these things weigh very little it comes with the chainsaw the blade uh, and the bar guard this is known as the bar bar guard on there and also this brake okay this part here is where you fill it up with bar oil. Now bar oil is what you need to lubricate the blade as it goes round. It doesn't come, the kit doesn't come with bar oil, but it takes a very small amount. I think something like 25 milliliters. It's a very small amount that that takes. And you put it in here, press that down, and it lubricates your chain on your bar. The other equipment it comes with is a pair of safety gog goggles, a very small pair, but critical when you're using this because it does fling chips everywhere and the other thing you get with it are a pair of gloves and I'll show you those gloves now now these are the gloves they're supplied with it's supplied with it's just a cotton glove it's not slash proof okay but you cannot rely on slash proof gloves as you can see cut through it with my Leatherman okay not slash proof or Kevlar gloves they comes with it's just a hand protection when you're lifting the logs up but this little bit of kit is flipping spot on they're very inexpensive as I said I'll provide you a link below but I'm going to go up now Jason's processing some wood and I'm going to show you what you would need PPE wise that's personal protective equipment for using a saw like Jason uses and myself back at home so I'll show you that now and explain the good and the bad and the ugly when it comes to PPE. Let's go and have a look. Right, so we're up the back of Jason's property now. As you can see, there's a big woodland all the way around. This is his other log store in this building here. So screw through here. This is his other log store. In now. So he ain't gonna get cold. But I'm gonna show you Jason's setup now. 
which is more of a heavier duty setup and what you what you're gonna need to use this because this is a lot more dangerous a lot more horsepower going through this even that said that little one would quite easily cut through your skin in a nanosecond and cause you lots of problems so that's Jason's Husqvarna chainsaw I won't go into it too much because I'm not talking about that but with this it's a petrol chainsaw and you put oil in it as well in the fuel and also you'll need the bar oil in that to lubricate the bar now here's my lovely model Jason now this is what he uses every time he picks a chainsaw up no excuses yeah. got chainsaw boots like steel toe cap boots on that go up to there which are thickly padded now these chain these trousers are proper chainsaw trousers that wasn't a chainsaw by the way <laughs> if you if you slip if you slip with a chainsaw and it touches your leg because these shorter bar ones if you slip through in a motion that you're going to be using it will catch your leg now inside there is a membrane like a padding and what that does is that grips as soon as that chainsaw touches that bar that padding comes out and locks that bar solid so it stops the bar from moving now they are a must if you're using these big chainsaws okay you have to wear proper PPE the other thing he's got on is his eye guard and his safety helmet if anything bams him on the head and also ear defenders because these things we'll start it up in a minute and show you these things are very loud and throw out a lot of chips that is I couldn't use this saw without this. No, you can't, no. Definitely. I've got the same, same setup at home. I don't think you're going to get away with using because your head will be No, ringing. but the one I'm going to show you, the one we've been sent, the C-seal one, is super quiet. So, and also on his hands, this is his lead hand. This is what is going to be on the front of the chainsaw, okay? That's a padded chainsaw glove, okay? Proper protection. And on the back hand that he uses to operate it with, He's just got a normal gardening glove, okay? I should have. I've got the other chainsaw. Got the other chainsaw glove, but it's more comfortable with that. But that hand is not... As soon as you let go with that hand, yeah. that bar stops. Yeah. The whole operation stops. And this here, when your if it gets jammed and your hand gets thrown forward, that will now lock the bar and it will not work, okay? So as long as you keep both hands on here, you're safe, okay? So you need to protect your legs and your feet at all times. Yeah, you can get chainsaw jackets as well, but it's your legs and your feet you need to protect. We're just waiting over there for a snowstorm to come in. But I'll get Jason to demonstrate now on his saw horse. You might want to go back a bit. I'm going to go back a bit. <laughs> I don't want to get covered in wood dandruff. He's going to demonstrate to you now on his saw horse how he's going to use this chainsaw. Then I'll show you the other one, the Cecil one, and it's flipping brilliant. We're both really impressed with it. And now, I'm not going to do, as I said, I'm not going to do reviews on stuff that I think, that's ah, rubbish, gimmicky, like flipping, whatever. I'm going to do stuff that's going to be handy for us as travellers and motorhomers, van lifers, to carry around. That is so light. Can't get over how so light is. The main weight on that is the battery. And as I said, you can use Makita batteries with it. I reckon that comes out of the Makita factory and it's a fraction of the price. Really, really good bit of kit. But now we're going to get Jason to show you just how noisy this chainsaw is and do a comparison and get him to cut through a, piece, a few pieces of this wood. Now these come with a technique that you have to use to start them for starters and they're not always the easiest thing to start for people. There we go. Okay, so Jason's now tighter. Now you can hear just how loud it is. I'll stand right back over here anyway, actually I'll stand behind him, here we go. Cutting through that like a hot knife through butter. You see that? And that's off now. So you can see just how fast that went through that. That's taking no prisoners, okay? Now I'm going to record while Jason uses this other one. But we were talking about this to some of our friends the other day, and they actually got caught down a little lane in the winds and a tree had gone across the road now my friend carries something similar to this like a little jigsaw type thing to cut through branches if he gets stuck now this thing would be absolutely ideal for that because we've all been down roads 
especially in these high winds, got snow coming in now, where you're going to get stuck. So I'll just show you, Jason, using this little chainsaw. Just listen to how quiet it is and how easy it is to use. Give that a go, mate. So, easy with one hand operation. You've got that back guard on there. Okay, through it nice and easy, nice and quiet. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, that's a new saw blade, yeah. new, uh, a new chain on there, which is super sharp. Now, these saws not only come with a pair of goggles, a pair of gloves, and a little kit and a little instruction booklet, it also comes with a spare bar and a spare chainsaw blade. I think we'd better go in there, haven't we? We're going to go and hide, and I'll talk to you about the rest of the kit we're going to be showing you. Here, we're going to hide. Look, this is what's happening. We're going to hide in Jason's barbecue hut. Let's get in here. Look at this. Reindeer skins. And that's the barbecue hut. Whew. We just got out of that in time, mate. So this is the actual chainsaw itself. Now it's a 21 volt lithium battery, four amp power. And there's the battery, which as I said, the Makita one fits directly to this. Now you do get two batteries with this. The likelihood you're gonna run out of batteries, and there's the Makita battery, which is a whole heap more expensive that's an 18 volt, that's a 21 volt, that's a four amp power, that's a four amp power. But the only thing is with the Makita one, it does take a bit of knocking off. It sits in, locks on and works perfectly, but when you come to take it off, the clip isn't as loose. So you have to sort of push the button in and give it a bit of a palm and then it slides off. But there's the... Cecil logo. Now you can get a six inch bar, but this is the eight inch bar. I went for the slightly longer bar. Eight inches is always better than six, right? And there's the motor on the side. But that is a very capable, good little bit of kit. It's very easily maintainable. What you do is you unscrew that, unscrew that, and basically that releases the bar so you can take the bar off. And when you operate it, you have to pull that trigger and push that button in with your thumb. And then that starts it. As soon as you let go of the trigger or that button, that stops. But what a lovely little bit of kit. I'm well happy with that. Now the only thing what we were saying as well is with this, this bar cover, which is flipping brilliant, and this little guard, what I would do is, this is Jason's idea, is put some fluorescent or some white or red or yellow electrical tape around this. Because that's the sort of thing you put on the floor and lose. Anything black or green, when we're doing bushcraft, we usually put a bit of orange tape around it. So a lot of people like green stuff to take out in the woods, but a lot of people have not, have not got as much kit admin as say myself or Jason. We look after our kit, we know where everything is all the time. And if you used to leave that on the floor while you're chainsawing, and you've got wood chips on it or some leaves on it, you wouldn't see that again. So a high-vis marker on there is what you need to do. Just a bit of electrical tape around there, top and bottom, so you can see it more when it's on the floor. There we go, we've got a flicker of the fire on us. It's a bit warm in here, mate, isn't it? We've just got a snowstorm coming across the Dornock Firth. And I just thought I'd show you this. Because I did get this quite a while ago. Becky, the lady that has been dealing with me, has been very patient on me getting this review out because I won't do reviews immediately. I'll do them in my own time and get them out and do them properly and show you a big range of stuff with it that you can use it for rather than rushing it and not doing it as well as I can do. As I say, we've both used chainsaws before, but that is a very handy bit of kit. Now, you can also do a chainsaw course, which I recommend people if they're gonna be using a big chainsaw to use but this is just an everyday you can use in a garden and stick in the in your motorhome to get you out of a sticky position and use that to get yourself free 
And we've just been on Dale Reddy campsite, which is a campsite you can have open fires on. So something like that, you can just chop up your little bits of wood. If you haven't got a little, it just saves, saves your time and energy. I've got a, another a, a silky saw, like a pruning saw in my motorhome that I carry all the time. I can put that in my rucksack, lightweight. And I use that quite a lot. But this sort of thing, absolutely fantastic. So thanks very much for sending that to me, Cecil and Becky. Top bit of kit, thoroughly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed that little video. As I say, I'm not gonna do many reviews because I like doing what I like doing and I think reviews sort of stress me out a little bit. But I'll put a link in as well to the video from my friends, Northerners on tour, when they got stuck down a track and they had to use something like this to actually get the branches off to get down it. Absolute nightmare. And if you used to pull up to somewhere like that and you had half a dozen cars behind you and you can't turn around down a little country track in your motorhome, that would be an absolute lifesaver. Obviously, it's not going to cut through great big trees. You'll have to call the council for that or the Forestry Commission. But this could get you out of trouble. Good little safety item to have in your van. But as always, be safe. Think about what you're doing twice and cut once. Okay. Make sure you've got a safe follow through for the blade like you would do with any cutting tool. So you know if that blade goes through, that saw blade goes through an item, through a piece of wood, it's going into thin air and not going into part of your body. Otherwise, you will be in severe trouble. Chainsaws are very, very dangerous tools. Anyway, I hope you like that. Stay safe, especially when using one of these. Stay sane, journey well. And myself and Jason are now sitting in the fire hut in front of that. Catch you again soon. Bye.